Let's go! Yes, sir! Arkansas fans, what the heck was this first quarter? Comment below your thoughts on the Razorbacks for the rest of the season. And it started off with a freaking bang. Gotta love this, man. Spread them out. Don't let this Ole Miss defensive line just dominate this game. And guess what? You get a simple little out. And, well, after this, it started to fall apart in this first quarter. Um... Obviously, just simple pitch and catch. Any receivers catching that and turning up field. And I was a little shocked that Arkansas didn't keep doing this. So you get the massive goal line stand. Obviously, what you want to do if you think they're going to run on fourth and inches, you want to submarine and create some penetration. So it's a really well done goal line play, just causing as much disruption with these offensive linemen to allow your backers to knife in here and make a play. And this honestly is a really good stick right there by Danico Slaughter. And him, along with the host of Razorbacks, make this play. It's a really, really, really good work. All right, so backed up in your own end zone, they love to tee off on a run, right? I would have not run on first down. I am just calling a quarterback sneak. At this point, you you have not been able to block their DTs. I think you either quarterback sneak backed up on your own one or... You play action pass. You don't hand off to the running back because their guys are just teeing off, especially if that involves a single block on Walter Nolan. This is just not good scheme at all. And Walter Nolan almost gets in here and has a safety. It's a good job by Braylon Russell to fall forward and, and prevent the safety. Then you get here on the second down play. I Once again, I, I'm not really understanding the route concepts here on the second down play. Not a good play action fake at all. Yes, this could be thrown right here, and that is where Talon should be throwing the football. But you guys know on in breakers, he, he doesn't feel too comfortable throwing it, especially if it's not Armstrong. You got to rip this, and he, did a, he does a good job eventually just throwing this thing away um, to survive another down. Throw it in the direction of the receiver, and it sets up third down. All right, so this is outrageously good defensive play calling right here, okay? It is really, really, really good stuff. So you motion a guy to see if it could potentially be a blitz, and you don't have a guy blocking the nickel corner blitz right here, all right? Or this, honestly, is just a linebacker. In this situation, with your offensive line struggling to protect, it is inexcusable to send your running back out on a route backed up into their own end zone, right? And I don't know why Talon is starting off looking to the left here anyway. In this spot, just throw it, right? Uh, you know, trust Andrew Armstrong's going to get open versus this press man. But he decides to work backside. Once again, the blitz was not accounted for, and it's just a free hit on the QB, right? Um, maybe the offensive tackle was supposed to let this interior guy go and the guard pick him up. Whatever the case may be, the protection was not set properly, and it is a strip sack for a tutty. Um, it is, um, it's bad. It's really, 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 really bad offense. Yeah, so this needs to be the Arkansas offense until teams start to stop it. All right, I understand that's not really Taylor Green's game, the methodical over-the-middle passing, but he's gotten more comfortable doing this, and teams have yet to be able to stop it, right? This is Chris Poo Paul, obviously the Arkansas transfer. You have a DB that slips, and you want to get the football to Andrew Armstrong in space as much as you possibly can. That's a ridiculous tackle by Chris as well. And then guess what? Get the zone read game going, right? If their defensive line is playing aggressive, and really, you know, pressing in on these runs, pull, that's a really good pull read right there from Talon. And this is why I don't get what defenses do. Do I prefer Rashad DeBinion, who hasn't done anything in his career to have the football? Do I prefer Talon Green to have the football? Make him have to hand this football off. I would not press down this hard um, on that. And Talon Green pulls it, eventually fumbles, and gets hurt. So, we'll see. I, I'm obviously cutting this as the game goes on. Uh, hopefully, he's okay. Because right now, he is playing at a ridiculously high level. I don't think the safety was really his fault. And you could see that his leg gets folded up on. I don't think this is a hip drop either. It's just in this spot. Um, now, I don't think this is anything dirty. You got to get like Lamar Jackson and go limp. Once you feel contact, you see his leg gets folded underneath. And that's what causes him to 
toss the football forward right there. All right, here we go. Third and 17, and you get the absolute best play call imaginable here. You get three receivers to the right, and you have four DBs over here playing it, right? Looks like they're doing some kind of box technique over here. Um, and what they do, this is a really good call right here by Arkansas. They're running a screen to the left, all right? Look at all the pressure that Ole Miss has, and you can't block them anyway. You hadn't been able to block them, so you run a screen. And guess what? Chris Poupal, one of the best linebackers in the SEC, you get a really good block right here. All you got to do, follow your block, read the leverage, and, well, mm. Mm. And on Power SEC, I've gotten some messages about how hard I've been on Rashad Dabinion. But, I mean, he's eaten up a single digit. He's a multiple-year starter. Backup quarterback's in. Um, offensive line can't block the front. Third and Bentonville here. And you get the perfect play call. You get the absolute perfect play call. All you have to do is follow your block. Keep your feet. All right? You could have even stopped, regathered yourself, take your mouthpiece out, put it back in, run up the left side here, and you're probably picking up the first down and then some. Just any replacement level running back at this spot is picking up at least enough yards to make this a manageable field goal. And, well, I, I, I this is probably the worst run screen I've ever seen from a running back. I, I'm serious. Uh, it, it's just, ugh, ugh. Ugh, Razorback running back room banged up. All right, here we go. And yeah, so first down run, Rashad Dominion. You know, it's not going for more than three yards. So now we get to here. And honestly, I you just couldn't block them. You, you, there's so many different ways you could talk about how this game got so ugly so quickly. If you get beat this badly in the trenches, it's really hard to overcome it. Now, full disclosure, Ole Miss did this to LSU as well. I mean, they've done this to practically... Everyone. Twist stunt right up the middle. And once again, you need Dominion to step up and make a play. And, uh, you know, he's just not there to make this block. Obviously, this block needs to be made by Nichols. You pass off the twist stunt and you pick up the twister coming around. Okay. But, you know, Dominion could save the day here. And he just doesn't see it. And there's just a lot of pressure. And the funny thing about it was you take a look at these route concepts. You have some things open right? This is bang, bang. Uh, this shallow drag is also there uh, to Haas, but you couldn't block the twister. And then this is how it's designed. You get a twister right here, and then you have a QB spy that just kind of sits in behind it, right? So you'll see that the spy is just sitting right there, and he's able to just clean up uh, the mess. And it's just really good defense beating good offense, right? That was a play where I did see some things open. And you see why Ole Miss's defensive line is so daggum good. Third and seven. Um, I know that the in-break, I, I would just keep running in-breakers until they stop it, right? They've not been able to really stop it just yet. It's just you've had so much pressure in your face. But instead, you run all verticals, basically past the sticks. I hate this play call. Hate it. And it shows um, bad coaching again. You're down 21-3. and three. You're in a lot of trouble. Your defense isn't stopping them. You have two downs to pick this up. This is two down territory, um, but you run all your routes past the sticks, right? They're just sitting there waiting on it. Then you're running these deeper routes. Why on earth do you think you can trust your protection, right? It does hold up this time. The protection here is actually fine, um, you do eventually get a hand in the face right here from their quarterback, uh, Pegues. But the protection actually did hold up on this third and eight. But you see no inbreakers, nothing easy. And you're, this, you've just got to make this catch if you're Broden. Okay, is that pass interference? Yes, it probably is. But this is their single digit. Uh, Amos making a play. It's their best corner. Is that P.I.? Uh, I don't know, right? I would be... Throwing my hands up. Well, no, they, there was two breaths. They're not giving you the calls. You're at home. Yeah, I thought you were going to get that call. Huh? 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 All right. So we get to the second and eight. And yeah, I mean, this is just the ugliest game in the SEC this year. Um, 
So what they decide to do is run a, a switch vertical, right? So the tight end verticals around and you're running a go. And the point of this is to get the receiver in a vertical versus Jalen Johnson, the safety, who's not known for his foot speed. So you're bringing this tight end around to heat up this corner. And then Watkins is just in a foot race versus a safety. And that's basically it. Um, I wish ESPN gave me an all 22 to show you because you do get some pressure. Um, but, you know, when you're getting burned this badly in the secondary, uh, it doesn't matter, okay? Jalen Johnson, who's had some good moments this year, you've got to make this touchdown saver, okay? Instead, he's just playing patty cake with you. Right here is where you should just dive down at his knees, okay? This tackle has got to be made, uh, except you get a uh, stiff arm, and then, you know, basically he's able to score, Right? That's the point of your name being a safety. You have to prevent. You're the last line of defense. You're the safety valve. Can't make that tackle. All right, here we go. First and 10. And it looks like my under 54 is toast. Huh? 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 I really liked it going into the game. I had a variety of reasons as to why. But this game is about to be a track meet. And this is basically what I would have done uh, from the get-go. Is spread them out. Keep doing what you did on the first play of the game. Don't even try and run the football, right? A, a touch to Dominion uh, and Russell behind that offensive line is just nothing. Just get the football in Andrew Armstrong's hands as many times as you can, and you get a big explosive play on first down. There you go. Really, really, really good stuff. Okay. This play gets blown up, but, man, this is more. I, I, I think Jaquin Jackson is seeing this out, okay? So it's a handoff here. This is a very difficult block to ask your offensive tackle. So if you're Kustas right here, you want to sit on this double a little bit longer to allow your offensive tackle to have the room to come over here and make this block. Either way, if you're Dominion, there is nothing here. Nothing. Okay, so why are you still running in this direction? Stop and get vertical, all right? Get creative. Do something to help out your run blocking, but that's just not going to happen. Um, you know, he does a good job making that guy miss. Now, once again, it's a difficult cut vertical right there, but still, I think Jaquinia Jackson's seeing that and finding a way through. All right, here we go, second and 11. Why are you not throwing this every single time? LSU gave this to you. Ole Miss is giving this to you. Throw it. This, every single time, every single time, but he waits too long, and he doesn't like that this backer is right down, you know, his throat, basically, pause, huh, 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 so he breaks his contain, and uh, eventually he gets his football here to Luke Haas, all right, um, and Luke does a good job giving him a, a target to throw to, and he picks up uh, some good yards, and then you finally get a uh, Rashad Dabinian touchdown right here and this is really well blocked and you score pretty easily all right you do get away with the hold right here on the second level okay uh yeah i mean that's i mean come on huh 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 but the binion scores you knew something was up <laughs> ah. all right so arkansas's defense magically gets a stop and you get a ridiculous piece of quarterbacking this is what excites you about Taylor green so you see right here that they roll into uh, a cover one and the open portion of the field is right here where the safety blitz decided to come from. So Taylor Green sees that, and he finally gets his football to an improved Luke Haas. Really, really, really good stuff. And the drive eventually stalls. There was an actual screen run by DeBinion properly uh, for a few yards. And, I mean, this was just the story of the game. You just could not protect what they had in their front. And that's what happens. All right, so I know Sam Pittman will get a good bit of the blame, but, man, Travis Williams, this was honestly inexcusable. I mean, as good as the Tennessee game was, we see that their offense isn't really that great. Th this was so, so, so bad, right? Man, on so many different levels. So his defense kind of got bailed out. They had a few bad run calls, and then there was a false start. So they're trying to basically give you this at the end of the half, and you still couldn't stop it, or you get a little orbit motion here. And, 
man, I, I didn't understand the three man rush. I know it worked uh, versus Tennessee, uh, but you get a little of the fake uh, screen right here, and then you decide to get vertical on this deep out. Obviously, no pressure whatsoever, and this is just honestly too easy. Um, and look, you have a chance right here, Danico Slaughter, to actually pick this off because Dart is late on this. But this is what happens when you don't step up and make plays. Slaughter actually should be picking this off, if we're being fair. If his head was turned and actually wanted to be an athlete and make a play on the ball, at the very least, uh, bat it down. Not only do you not bat it down, he catches a football and... And Arkansas made Jordan Watkins look like Justin Jefferson out here. And what do they do? Well, they do basically the same thing. You, you can't stop Jordan Watkins. Why not just keep throwing the football to Jordan Watkins? Throw in the direction of the blitz. Easy pitch and catch. And that honestly should never be that easy. Especially in a two-minute drill, you never want to give up the sideline that easy. And honestly, if he would have just turned... He's probably scoring. I understand he's trying to get out of bounds as soon as he possibly can, but still. All right, and then you get bailed out again from some bad coaching from Lane Kiffin. This actually got their best player, uh, their best running back hurt. Um, I mean, I understand the look said to run the football, but if you only have one timeout left, that really doesn't make a whole lot of sense. And their best player... Uh, her, or their best running back gets hurt. So I want to show some loves to our partner, Sequoia Dental. All the Arkansas coverage here via Power Hour SEC is with our friends at Sequoia Dental. Book your appointment today. Yes, they are prepared each and every time they hit the office. Sequoia Dental. SequoiaDental.com. Book today. Follow them on Instagram. All the good stuff. So this is a really, really, really bad defensive call here coming out of a timeout, all right? I understand that there is a whole lot of blitz equity here because if you do get a sack, you're knocking them, you know, basically out, right? They can't rush on the field and get a field goal. But you also have to know if you're calling this blitz right here, which is an all-out blitz, the quarterback's working quickly anyway, right? So... There's not as much equity in just bringing everyone, all right? Either way, it's a one-on-one -on -one matchup with Jordan Watkins. And the thing about it is they protect it, honestly, pretty well. And, you know, you're trusting your corner to make a play on a jump ball. It's just not happening. And honestly, in this spot, what I would have done if I'm the defensive back, I'm keeping on committing pass interference penalties, right? If you yank him down right here, uh, that clock runs off and it moves forward and it makes, him, it makes him have to make another decision. So this is also poor coaching. If you're beat this bad, tackle them, all right? Tackle them. And you can't do it, and it's a touchdown. So comment below. I don't know if I'm going to do a second half breakdown. I've already done all this first half stuff. All right, so Sam Pittman is going to get the blame, and rightfully so. I did not think the Walmart line landed the way that he thought he would. Um, because it, it, it makes Arkansas sound cheap. Now, is it true that Ole Miss went out and, and, and bought an elite defensive line? Yes, and all of those guys, as you guys have, have, have seen, have paid off, right? But, man, to have this team this ill-prepared pre Ill is not good considering Ole Miss is without their best receiver. You would have never have thunk this. Trey Harris is not playing, and he has been – their offense, when he's not been on the field, their offense has been uh, a bottom seven offense. And when he's on the field, they're a top three offense in the SEC. Well, this was by far their best offensive half of the season without him. And you had all these penalties go your way. Uh, it, it, the fact that Travis Williams' defense still got lit up, that says a lot, right? This was by far his worst half at Arkansas. So just an overall disaster. And obviously, I didn't like some of the Bobby Petrino calls, as you guys clearly saw. Um, but tell me what you guys think. Should Sam Pittman be fired? Uh, I think a lot of you are already looking forward to basketball season anyway. Ah, it is. Power. Hour. SEC. Boom. Follow me on Twitter at Carter the Power. Uh, next person that follows me from watching this video, I will send you uh, something. And tonight, we are... Oh, yeah. Shout out to Sequoia Dental again. We are doing... Some garlic parm wings. Let's go.